wrong, but I decided that it was important to meet with parents because um, it, to establish a strong relationship off the bat at the beginning of the school year. I didn't want the first time that I met with parents to be a discipline issue. I wanted it to be about um, educating the parents, letting them know what the expectations were for the classroom, but also what the expectations are for high school. Since I have ninth graders, it's, um, it's a new process for both the children and the parents. And I wanted them to have a strong idea of the difference between middle school and high school. Um, and obviously to meet me and feel comfortable and know that I was going to be with their children all year long. So I sent this letter home and I created options of dates and times um, for parents to circle. And I, try, I stayed sometimes as late as 8 o'clock even though it says 6.30. I knew that to make it flexible for parents I needed to stay late for them to be able to come. And then just some of the things I went over with parents. I gave parents um, the dates for progress grades and semester grades. I told them it was really important that they stay on track um, in uh, monitoring their students' grades. And I explained to them that in high school the stakes were higher because I, gave, I created this chart for the parents so the parents could understand the classes uh, that the students needed to take as requirements for high school and as requirements for the university. And I explained that um, these requirements were non-negotiable and if a student failed in these requirements, they wouldn't be able to graduate high school. Um, and so I wanted them to really understand that unlike middle school, when a student got an F, they could be held back from graduating. And so this was a visual to help them understand uh, the path that their child needed to take and why it was so important that they monitor their child's uh, progress and, and semester grades as well. I also gave the parents a list of information uh, about attendance, uh, numbers of important people for them to contact, regarding progress grade, regarding attendance, regarding semester grades, and any other um, concerns or issues they had. And I wanted to make sure they knew who the, their child's counselor was and who they could speak to in the main office. I also created a visual representation um, of what our year looked like. Unlike middle school, we have quarters. We have four quarters, and each quarter is nine weeks. And at the end of nine weeks, the child actually gets a semester grade. Where in middle school, it's at the end of 18 weeks that a child gets a semester grade. So again, just trying to make sure that they could have a concrete visual of the differences between um, middle school and high school. And then I also created sort of like a year-long timeline of the things that the students needed to focus on from September through January and then from February to June. And I had a PowerPoint that I used to go over um, things like the CASI, uh, things like getting involved in community service, um, preparing for summer enrichment programs, all of these things I went over with the parents. Again, just trying to help them understand the importance of their child's journey in high school. When I taught AVID at Hoover, as the teachers, we decided to empower ourselves, our students, um, by doing this. And we saw how um, powerful it was to meet the parents and to create a relationship with the parents. Um, once the parents create a relationship with you and know that you have their child's best interest in mind, they're more likely to support what you're doing with the child. And when you call them and let them know that the child is falling behind, they don't second guess your call. They, they are immediate in their reaction and immediate in the intervention. Whereas when you don't have a relationship with the parent, they care for their student, but they're not as immediate in their reaction to intervene with the child that's in the classroom um, because they're not quite sure what your approach or your motive is. And the Faces for the Future program at Hoover, um, even doing home visits was very powerful because you weren't just asking parents to come to you, you were serving them by going to them and by saying that they were important enough for you to go to their environment. And so I've actually done a few home visits for my students as well. Those students who I feel need a little bit more motivation or students whose parents just couldn't come, I've gone to their homes. Um, and I like doing that too. I wish I had time to do it for all the students because by going into their homes, um, 
they tell me a story. Their home tells me a story, and they themselves tell me a story. And for me, that story reminds me of who I'm serving and why I'm serving them. And this is again my observation. Oh yeah. Um, Hoover has wonderful pathways. They had the AOIT Academy of Informational Technology. Avid was a pathway. VAPA, Visual and Performing Arts, was a pathway. Um, but it wasn't a, the, these pathways weren't defined as school. So they were pathways that got kind of blurry and. Um, Students who didn't necessarily pick the pathway were put in the pathway because there was no more room in another classroom. Some academies and defined schools, so there was always about um, a third to half of the students that were not in any pathway. And they were just kind of being lost in the general education process. Some teachers were kind of in the pathway, some teachers weren't, they were teaching just general education courses, so they weren't really taking ownership. That It's the students that don't make a decision that are the ones that should be in a pathway, that are the ones that need the most motivation and the most uh, monitoring in their schoolwork. In small schools, students have to make a decision. They have to select a pathway. And it doesn't mean that this is what they have to do for the rest of their life. Because again, the things that they learn in these pathways, uh, the things that they learn in these small schools, sorry, are um, skills that they will use no matter what they choose to do after they graduate from high school. But they have to pick a school. And so there is no opportunity for them to get lost. They're going to join one of the small schools, they're going to join a community, and what students want most is to be part of a community, to feel safe and to feel like they have adults who they trust.